What's up, YouTube? Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fuel Efficient channel. Today is December 28th, 2015. Almost New Year. I'm here in New Jersey, Lindenwald. So, as you guys know, well, you guys may or may not know, I did a little quiz yesterday on my Snapchat. If you guys don't have me yet on Snapchat, go add me there. EXE Philly Fishing without a G. All right, so I did a little quiz yesterday for my Snapchat folks and I asked them what should I fish for today? Black crappie, Pomoxis nigromaculatus, or common carp, Cyprinus carpio. And common carp, apparently people really want me to catch some common carp, all right? So common carp won. So that's why I'm here today in Lindenwald, New Jersey, okay? It's about 40 degrees outside. It is very cold. I am using a lot of clothes all right i don't know if you guys can see it or not i'm using like five layers of clothes all under armor okay two thermal layers and two x storm okay this one's an x storm too right protects against the rain and all the stuff it is cold all right i'm using two layers for pants one thermal both under armor two pairs of socks you know and my shoes so yes it is not a pleasant weather 40 degrees but feels like 36 because there is some wind today as well Water temperature should be in 45, 50 degrees because the last, the past couple days, it's been quite nice, okay? So anyways, today I'm here in, at Kirkwood Lake. I'll give you guys a brief view of this place. So as always, da -da -da -da, follow me around, okay? We got here Kirkwood Lake in Lindenwald, right next to the Petco Transportation Center, okay? Petco is like right over there. And today I will be fishing for carp. This is my equipment right here. I won't be fishing Kirkwood Lake, but I will be fishing the spillway below Kirkwood Lake. So I will be fishing right by this pipe over here, okay? Hopefully we will land some common carp. This is a well-known winter spot for carp fishing here in Lindenwald. Folks do come here fish a lot. Water. Well, water is a little bit higher than usual, probably because of the rain, you know, but that, that doesn't really matter. It just makes the water warmer than usual, right? I told you guys recently it's been hotter than usual. See, you guys can have a view. This is the spillway here at Kirkwood Lake. Summertime, I usually have some good fun right over here, okay? All right, fellas, now that you guys have a view of this place already, let's go do some fishing. I got my equipment right here. I'll keep you guys updated on catching some common carp. At the pipe. All right, hopefully we'll catch some common carp here today. I will be casting right around this area, okay? And then I have an ultralight rod that I will be playing with small pieces of night crawler right over here. Now, as much as I hate to see all this trash on the floor, sometimes trash can really help us out okay in a sense that this right here for example is irrefutable proof that someone has fished here for common carp before yeah and as, as, as i always tell you guys i got myself here a little plastic bag inside my bag i will be collecting some trash here after i fish you know you gotta clean up after otters unfortunately because other people it seems they just don't do their parts you know remember folks when you're outdoors respect mother respect mother nature yeah never litter okay protect our environment this kind of stuff not cool all right let me start getting my stuff set up here hopefully we we'll, hopefully we will land on some common carp today yeah all right, folks, let me just quickly show you what setup we're going to be using today for these elusive winter common carp. So to start, of course, a rod holder, yeah? A rod holder because seriously, you don't want to lose, you know, <laughs> your rod in the water when the carp pulls your rod. Wintertime, carp fight much, much less than summertime, but they will still give you a very strong run, okay? So you definitely want to have a rod holder my first setup for tonight i will pretty much just show you the rig because my rods and reels are different okay but okay anyways <laughs> i'm using a shimano sedona 2500 fd with my sand croix avid pearl rod 
uh, a medium light I'm using 10 pounds braided line cast king okay and the setup that I'm using the rig that I'm using for today is a sleep sinker setup I like to use this setup during the winter time no hair rigs nothing very complicated just a half ounce bullet sinker okay I'm using just enough weight to hold my stuff all the way down here I don't know if you guys can see it or not but if you see all this white stuff moving away you realize that there is this little current right here I'm using just enough just enough so my stuff does not move all the way down okay half ounce bullet sinker with a little eagle claw snap swivel and this snailed hook size six also eagle claw we're gonna put some corn on this hook I'm gonna show you soon we're gonna chum the spot right in front here and then I'm gonna set up my ultralight for multi-species fishing all right be back in a bit all right so we got our corn for the day where's my corn there we go we got our corn for today Del Monte garden quality whole kernel corn let's see which one did they use here what the heck they actually used a Del Monte, well, a different, you know, thing, but they actually also use a Del Monte quality one, you know. <laughs> See, man, if this thing, if this thing could catch fish, all right, this thing can catch common carp, man. Just don't trash your stuff around, yeah, man. That's not, that's not cool. Whoever won, trash this here at Kirkwood, you know. Next time, just clean up after yourself, all right. All right, let's open this little baby here. Okay, there we go. We gotta release the juices. The juices are not, you know, we don't need the juices at all. It's a sticky, it is a sweet. It's gonna make your hand all messed up, all right? There we go, good to go. Open the lid, place it right next to my bag so I can trash it later. You see, there we go, man. This is the bait for winter time for carp, all right? Whole kernel corn, that's it. There is really no secret okay and what we do we just get two pieces i like two pieces but you can put more if you want two pieces of whole kernel corn and put it on your hook you see that just to cover enough of your hook but i, I like to leave the tip exposed so when the fish strikes you know he will see the tip right away then he will get hooked as for the casting distance check this out i'm not even casting all right i'm just gonna drop it right here there we go you see right around there that's it this is all i need let line go right don't move your sinker into the rod holder make your line straight okay so no slack line i don't have a slack line right here you guys can see right and that's it now the secret for carp fishing is that when you carp fish you need to chum all right so this is what i do during winter time fish's metabolism is not as high during summertime don't chum a lot this is about enough 10 to 15 kernel corns in one spot all right that's it because there's a little current i cast to the right of my bait so when it falls all the way down it's gonna be right on top of my bait i gotta do the same thing for the second setup now hopefully we'll be able to land some carp we will see all right i'm setting up my ultralight now i got my other two rods in the water already as you guys can see a little distance between both of them right you don't want to place the lines too close because if a fish gets it and the line is too close you will get tangled very easily i got everything set up here i am not a carp angler okay i am a multi-species angler i don't have a proper landing match so what i do I improvise with a plastic bag okay I just wet this plastic bag a little bit and the cool thing about the plastic bag is that after I use the trash bag I will use the same trash bag to bag all the trash around here you know <laughs> and for the net I don't need a really big net it doesn't matter how big the carp is this little trout net should be enough you know we will see I wanted to bring my big net around but then you know on the other hand it's quite a hassle to bring such a big net on public transportation you know i came here by train right all right let me set up my ultralight i will be using a size 10 hook on my ultralight with small pieces of night crawler just do some little multi-species you know while waiting for the carp and then you know i'll come back if i catch any fish all right fellas 
hopefully we will land some fish today on this cold winter day whoa 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 we got a small bite here we got a small bite here we got a small bite but by no means that was a carp bite so what does that mean let's see let's see got a small bite here but not not a carp bite fish on what we got here first fish of the day what whoa 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 take it easy aha first fish of the day not a common carp but we got ourselves here a bowhead yeah <laughs> there we go some folks were asking me for a bowhead video there you go you got your accidentally caught bowhead right here uh black with a little bit of white as you guys can see so this is a brown bowhead actually okay beautiful brown bowhead too hook is not too deep which is great we'll just unhook this fella here and put him back in the water as soon as possible all right let's take a photo too all right took a few photos of the bowhead here got the hook out let's release the beast yeah oh all right healthy first fish of the day a brown bowhead come on where's the common carp all right we caught a little brown bowhead just now right on top of our chum so what happens after that is you want to chum just a little bit more every time you catch a fish okay because the fish may have eaten already all the remaining of your chum so since i just caught this little brown bowhead check this out yeah not a lot just about 10 pieces of kernel corn for winter time chum right here oh i chum a little bit too far okay five more pieces right over here yeah done now we wait for the carp oh little bite here fish on <laughs> second species of the day second species of the day is a bluegill first a little brown bowhead now a bluegill all right quick photo quick release there we go bye bye good to go all right this is what we gotta do i'm gonna cast right over here right over there Ooh, missed it see that right over here let's see oh missed again see there's a fish right here i know it i'm dropping the night crawler it's getting whacked see that some fish blue goo getting whacking my night crawler here eh some winter fun here at the pipe at kirkwood lake let's see if we can catch some more right over here right over here look black let's see second bluegill there we go and this is how we do multi-species angling you know you just keep catching fish and sometimes different species come by all right let's see let's see all right come on nightcrawler do your job all right fish on third bluegill third bluegill all right bang yeah not bad not bad you know for one eye crawler and a size 10 hook this is good action right here all right again again let's see let's see if we, if we can catch anything different here all right come on come on come on all right fish on man another bluegill another bluegill there we go and you know ultra light setup with a small hook it's always fun you take your kids out doesn't matter how cold it is and you catch some fish you know that's amazing all right one one more one more oh anything different no still 
it's still a bluegill okay so we caught five bluegill here as you guys can see plenty of bluegill here close to the pipe beautiful fish all right beautiful fish gorgeous all right let's focus now on my other two rods here see if we can catch anything on them yeah some common carp please <laughs> all right i'll be back if i catch some extra new species here fish on Oh, all right, the bluegill are getting a little bit bigger now. I like that. I like that. This one here is a little bit bigger than the previous ones, okay? Say hi to the camera. Hi. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. Okay, let's throw this fella back. Whew. Quite a splash, huh? Watch, 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 watch. So I just switched from the night crawler to a small piece of cut bluegill. Small piece of cut bluegill. And guess what? Big bluegill just decided to eat child. Just like that. That's to show you guys that a fish will eat anything, man. <laughs> man, come on, bluegill. I put a little piece of, you know, cut bait, see if I can catch some other species of fish bluegill came up almost immediately oh come on give me a break bluegill all right and the sizes whoa species number three of the day this is not just any bluegill this is a hybrid i'm 100 percent positive yep this is a hybrid now a hybrid between what and what this thing certainly has some green sunfish in it so let's see yep it has some bluegill you see the blue in the operculum right here and it has some green sunfish you see yellow over here 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 and here there we go man on the little bluegill cut bait species number three of the day let's take a couple photos all right, took a few photos of this fish here. This fish has a big mouth, big enough for me to actually lip it, yeah? Little hybrid between green sunfish and bluegill. Whoa, there we go. Goes peacefully. Species number three of the day. Wait, wait, what? I just caught a bluegill on the gold medal without a tail. I mean, without its coral fin. Check that out. What? This this bluegill doesn't have a tail. Man, we, we got some weird mutant fish here <laughs> at Kirkwood Lake. We got this guy here without a tail. All right. We got the folks earlier who were eating right there, biting on bluegill, so catching bluegill on bluegill. We're talking about like little handyball lactors. What else are we gonna find over here, huh? Weird, weird place. Fish on. All right. Big bluegill on the gold medal. Grassy fella too, see that? Gold minnow, one inch, Berkeley, alive, gold minnow, never fails to disappoint. Yeah? On a 164 ounce trout magnet jig head. Ah, crushing the bluegills, but you know, no new species or anything. That's a little bit sad. fish on all right what we got here whoa we got something different here new species unbelievable unbelievable species number four of the day a little chain pickerel it's 
small chain pickerel from Kirkwood Lake and my first one ever from over here. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> so gorgeous. Small chain pickerel on the gold minnow. This is the first one ever that I've seen here at Kirkwood Lake. So, you know, let's take a photo and then release this guy. Wow. All right. This is something really exciting for me. This is my first ever chain pickerel here from Kirkwood Lake. Didn't even know that they were actually here, you know. So let's put this fella back. All right. Water is very cold today. Wow. Truly gorgeous. That was the species number four for the day. What a surprise catch, you know. On the little gold minnow. What a surprise catch. That's what I say. Micro fishing at its best, you know. fish on what we got here what we got here species number five of the day species number five of the day what we got here what we got here oh we got here large mouth bass <laughs> small but a large mouth bass regardless yeah species number five of the day let's take a couple photos and then i'm gonna release this fella here as a matter of fact let's see if this is a large mouth bass close your mouth buddy close your mouth Mmm, yeah, looking looking like a large mouth bass, not a spotted. All right. All right, let's release Mr. Large Mouth Bass over here. Oh, okay, good to go. Oh boy. Species number five and going strong. Hey, wait, is it species number five? We got the brown bowhead, Amiurus nebulosus. Then we got a bluegill, Lepomis macrocutus. We got a hybrid between a bluegill and a green sunfish. So between the Lepomis macrocutus and the Lepomis cyanellus. Then we got a chain pickerel, small chain pickerel, and Zox nigger. And finally, we got the largemouth bass, right? Yeah, Microptorus salmoides. So yeah, that's make it, that, that, that's, that makes five species for right now. We will see if we can land more species here. I'm still waiting for that common carp. All right, species number six of the day, the black crappie, Pomoxis nigromaculatus. Yeah, six species for this day, 40 degrees out here, Fahrenheit, you know, winter time. It's pretty good for multi-species, all right? Let me take a few photos of this guy. We're going to release it. All right, let's unhook this little fella the hooking was pretty easy let's release it all right good to go species number six of the day let's see if we can catch more species here hopefully species number seven is going to be my common carp i'm still waiting for it what is going on with this carp huh man that was the whole purpose of this trip too you know come on carp All right, little black crappie on the gold minnow, one inch gold minnow, small, but come on, let's be sincere, yeah, very gorgeous. Okay, I'm not going to take a photo of this little fella since we already have a photo of a crappie. Fish on, what we got here? Whoa, you gotta be kidding me, man. God damn, this is the smallest black crappie that I have ever caught in my life. Now this is what, oh see, and this is why you call them paper lips, all right? Man, no, we got to take a photo of this little fella. Wow, this is by far the smallest one I ever caught, black crappie. This is what I called micro fishing at its best man this this is true micro fishing right here 
Wow, let's take a quick photo. Oh no! It's all right, it's all right. The fish fell on the leaves, still very active. Aha, now let's release it. This little fish is good to go, yeah. Man, that was the smallest crappie I've ever caught. A lot of records for me in terms of smallest one. So beautiful. All right, I'm all packed up, all good to go. Now we got to collect some trash here at the Kirkwood Lake, yeah? I had this trash bag here with me that I used, I was supposed to use for, you know, as a landing match, but hey, I didn't I didn't land any carp, so I, I didn't really use it in the end. We're just gonna use it to collect some trash, starting by this little ugly t-shirt here that someone just decided to leave right here on the banks of the Kirkwood Lake. That is just amazing, yeah? All right, follow me around. Let's see what we can find around, yeah? There we go, lure box. A little rebel, rebel lure box. Okay, we got here, oh my God, of course, alcohol. Okay, whoosh, man, this is disgraceful. This is the can of corn that I opened today, right over here. We got that cover, this is mine, this is mine, this was my Eagle Claw size 6 hook that I was using. That's no worries. Then there's some more stuff here. What we got here, a little Rapala jointage lure that someone used here and never collected the, the bag, this is just amazing. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I know I won't be able to collect everything here. It's here, look at this, yum. Yum blue lemonade, like yum ding, dingers, you know. I know I won't be able to collect everything, but there you go, mustard, ultra point. But you do what you can, right? This is what I usually tell people. Another Rapala box. And you know, people who do this kind of stuff, people who go out there and litter, seriously, you guys should be ashamed of yourselves all right i'm saying this right away and there is nothing wrong to be ashamed of oneself okay but if you are ashamed of yourself because you litter you should stop doing so yeah see can the can of corn that i showed you guys earlier bottle of water all dirty right here check this out yeah like i said i know i won't be able to clean everything here but you know it is a good start to at least clean the spot up you know if nobody does anything about it it's gonna remain dirty forever right that's why sometimes as i like to tell people you're gonna really clean up after otters you know gogurt man i love gogurt you know i just don't throw the stuff around another rapala box shed wrap you know anyways i gotta keep collecting some trash here i'll be back soon all right so there we go calling a day you see, I picked up all the trash here. Look how clean this place is now, huh? Look how clean it is. Ready. Ready for someone else when that person comes here to fish. You see that? Oh, look, all the trash here. And I, as I told you guys, I can't pick up everything here, you know. But you just gotta do what other, people's don't, other people don't do, you know. You gotta pick up after their stuff. And there's a trash can. There's a trash can right over there. So do you know I'm throwing this right over there inside the trash can where trash should be. Unbelievable. And people just trash all around. All right. Anyways, <laughs> it's quite ironic. We came here to fish for common carp. And common carp is a species of fish that we did not catch. <laughs> we caught six species, different species of fish. No common carp. So right now I'm going to Laurel Lake. See if there's anything there. If nothing, oh wow, and it's starting, it's starting to rain too. If nothing, call it a day and go home. All right, folks, tie lines.